Welcome to this uh, Live Force Friday um, event. I hope everyone's had an excellent week. Um, today, we're going to continue uh, the concept of learning how to draw by watching um, us draw. Swanley will not be with us today. It'll be hopefully Mutunjay and I. Um, I hope that you guys are taking advantage of, you know, getting, like I said, the photographs, doing the drawings at home, and then coming in and watching us, and then doing the drawings again is probably the best step-by-step um, -step you can go through uh, with, you know, this month with Force February and, uh, you know, and improve your drawing skills, right? And, and understand how or what it means to actually draw with force. Um, I've been finding over mentorship sessions during this past week that the two, probably the two biggest things that have come up in conversation uh, are number one, um, that students um that that then understanding that there's there's sort of two sides to learning how to draw force there's like this intellectual side and there's this physical side and a lot of students can go through the you know the force program or learn from the books and get the uh, intellectual aspect of drawing with force uh you know that means like an understanding of you know how to apply the line um you know, how to get through the body, where are those rhythms in the line, uh, you know, and then get onto form and understand perspective and so on, and then shape design. Uh, but there's also this hidden uh, aspect uh, of the physicality of it all, uh, you know, and really um, drawing with force, you know, to actually draw it physically. Um, I'll probably hop around today during uh, today's uh, session, but I'll try to do some of that as well. Last week, we talked a little bit about shopping, uh, you know, shopping force down. That's like one way of doing it. And, you know, gluing it together is how to um, create rhythm and flow and make all that connect instead of it being choppy. You know, there's artists that fall into that choppy space. You know, like we use uh, Gibson to talk about construction in a choppy manner. Uh, there's JC Leindecker as an excellent example of um, forcefully chopping out figures and faces and, and then painting in that way also, right? Which is quite amazing. Uh, so let's just get to it. You know, I'm gonna draw and just kind of talk my way through uh, what I'm doing today. And hopefully you guys get some value out of it. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Uh, before we get started, as always, you know, please subscribe uh, to the channel if you are interested in what you're learning here and uh, hit the notification bell. This way you know when the photographs are coming up or even in the future videos, uh, just means you don't have to put it on your calendar, right? Like this way it's telling you, hey, Force Friday is coming up, right? Come join us. So I wanna talk, like I said, I'm gonna bounce around a little today between shopping and, um, and Force, right? And how those two things come together. My, my initial intention coming in today is I really wanted to also just share with you guys further how, you know, I would say one of the biggest critiques that I've gotten in teaching force is uh, proportion and measuring. It's like, oh, my God, that's so difficult, right? So difficult to do those things. Uh, let, let's dispel that first. OK, let's let's start there. I'd like to like to put the kibosh on that. Let's see. Let me get a. Um, been playing around with this classic brush. It's kind of been fun. Let's get that guy. Let's try to go full screen here and get this to be as large as possible. Okay. So the reason I still put the kibosh on it is, you know, anytime you create a line, any line, here's a line, uh, it already has a length, right? So in essence, we could say this length already equals, you know, um, a measurement. Right, I'm already measuring, right? The other thing that helps with measuring is relativity, right? So, you know, if I have one line that's this long and is getting me from point A to point B, right? Let's say this is A to B, you know, and then I have another one that's like this, that's a new length, a new A to B, you know, how do they relate to one another? Are their proportions correct, you know, relative to one another? There's their angles, you know, it's like this angle correct compared to this angle, right? Uh, on the website, uh, we have a thing called Lala, which I think we talked about probably years ago, actually, on Force Friday, uh, which is when you're at this, like, Force Basics stage, uh, you, you have this concept of working with uh, this acronym, right? It's length. Uh, let me see if I remember it, right? Length, angle, 
uh, location. Uh, let's see, length, angle, and what was the last A? <laughs> length, angle, oh, and apex. All right, and apex. Oh, here comes Mr. Matunje. So we have these, you know, these four. So no matter how you look at it, um, these are going to, um, they're going to help you at this stage. I think what is it's challenging, admittedly, is, you know, when you're drawing with force and you have these lines, uh, they're kind of floating out in the middle of this ether of the white of the page. You know, we're not drawing based off of a shape right away. Right, so that makes things a little more challenging. Shape definitely helps, you know, proportion and positive and negative space and so on. And we're not doing that at the start. And you know what I tell students? Uh, don't worry about that so much. You know, there's there's more important fish to fry here, like trying to just understand how the body works, right? So this chopping thing uh, that we talked about last week, you know, allows me to say, um, you know, I can, I can chop this back. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this over here on the photograph. And I'm very aware of this, you know, there's like this apex up here right, that kind of rounds out. It's a very round apex, not very pointed like uh, like the knee, right? Knee is very sharp, right? This is very round, so very casual, but it is an apex nonetheless, right? So I can try and like find it, you know, and say there's there's an angle of the back that's going like this. So when I'm doing this, even, you know, when I'm drawing, um, I might do this with soft touch to kind of average it out, right? And see like, oh, what's the other side? You know, how's this all going to feel, right? Uh, it's still in a sense me chopping, you know? I'm like, I'm, I'm aware of this. I want to be aware of the apex. How long is it? This apex is kind of broad, right? And then it's, it starts to dip down. But as I look, not very much, you know, not very much, right? It's like going over here. And that's getting me, you know, to the shoulder, right? Now, this is sort of more of a, I guess, a measurement-esque way of, you know, drawing with force. I, I'm doing this no matter what. It's just that I kind of do it on autopilot. To go back to the conversation I had earlier um, in today's meeting, um, but I want to feel the force of it. And when I look at this pose, the force I feel in this uh, is, you know, this upward sweep in the back that's driving into this shoulder, right? That's driving into the shoulder. And like, that's the juicy stuff for me. Like, I just want to drive into that shoulder like that. You see? So two things are going on here, right? I'm, I'm always aware of the sort of measuring aspect of things. I don't, the, the difference is I'm not drawing. My, my purpose in drawing is not to see if I can be a great measurer, but that I want to, I want to capture the aliveness of the model, right? I want to look at the model and go like, wow, look at what they're doing. Of course, measuring has to be part of that to some degree. I just don't want to make my goal measuring, right? I'm, I'm not here to design a piece of furniture, right? I'm here to be wowed, right? To be enamored and wowed by the model's energy, you see? And I want to keep myself um, susceptible, right? I want to keep myself susceptible and open to that, uh, to that power, you see? So here I just created a shape. Right, so shape's really awesome, and you can, and we we you know we talk about that kind of early on in, at drawingforce.com, you know, with the torso. I usually try not to have that happen too much with arms and legs at the beginning, but the torso, you can see, I'm already uh, creating a shape. Let me just tone this in very lightly here. All right, and of course that you know that's going to have form in it, and we usually get to that later. Here, let me shrink this down. And uh, let's get some arms and legs on this guy, right? <clears throat> I always draw way bigger than what I'm allowed. <laughs> that habit. So let's see, I, you know, I'm pushing in here. I look at his leg and I'm like, darn, look at that leg, right? Look at how much force is going on in it. Am I not going to look at measurement? Yeah, you, you know, you damn well know I'm going to, right? I'm going to look at the angle of this leg. I'm going to look at where it gets located. You know, here's like where his pectoralis is. And I drew this like dip in here. So I could see I have to get to about right here. That's like my point of reference, right? I don't draw that point, um, but I'm looking at it. So as I'm doing this A to B line, I keep stretching it out with every attempt to make sure I land in the right place and the angle is right. So those are all these like micro adjustments I'm making. Um to just get that all correct, right? But I'm I'm drawing with force at the same time, right? So this is what I call an outside, inside, outside leg, right? I'm going from here, getting to here, 
Uh, then I'm going to crunch this down like this, right? And sweep my way down, get myself to that foot. Am I looking at angles and length? Again, of course I am. I'm looking at this. I'm getting to this. I see the angle on his foot. Like all those things are, are happening, right? So it's like this. I see, um, I'll get back to that, right? I see the other leg. I see that it really gets crunched up. I see that the knee is like all squashed up in here, right? So that's like the location of it. I could see the angle and location of the other foot. I could see there's a negative space over here. Like there's all this other stuff that goes on, right? So I, I see I have to get from here to here. I have to get to the angle. All this stuff happens in the background, folks, right? Notice also the angle I just saw here between his foot, right? The shape of his foot, the angle of the side of the foot. And I have to get down to these toes, which are going to be here. Foot's pretty big because it's, you know, we're getting closer and closer to the camera, right? So it's going to be about right there. Right. Now, I wouldn't draw it the way you just saw me do it. This is all stuff that goes on in my mind, right? What I want to do is say, um, you know, wow, I really want to get the explosiveness of this like knee popping out of here, right? And have that force come shooting down the front of the, um, the front of the shin like this, right? And into the back of the heel. You'll notice I didn't draw a shape on either of these legs. I'm really just pushing for the forces, right? So that's going to go into the heel that goes over the top of the foot, um, you know, into the ball of the foot right here. Right. This brush, what's good about it is it, it keeps me a little rough and loose. And what's bad about it is it keeps me a little rough and loose, uh, meaning I can't get too much like nuance and detail with this very well. So, okay. So we're here, right? I have this pushing. I could see the other side of his body is like over here somewhere. Right, and we've got his arm. We were talking about all the force that's going on in this arm, right? And like we want to drive this arm down, so I want it to go that way, right? Now, positive negative space. If I want a quick measure. I can go off this knee now that I have it, and I can get myself over here, right? So that's my measuring stick. Would I go there right away? No, I would be aware of this, right? I want to be aware of this negative space, okay? When I draw with force. What I want to do is I want to get there by uh, the rhythm. Now, notice there's an angle here, okay? Notice that I'm on a diagonal. Uh, I see that the fingertips land about right here. It's very important. Angles, uh, you know, I, I say this so often during these Force Fridays. Angles are super important. You can't ignore them. You got to be right, right? You got to be right, right? So here, I'm just going to generalize the arm, right? But I want you to see how I'm connecting it down, all right? Get it to over here. All right, we got that wrist over here. I can look across and see that the wrist is, uh, I don't know, let's see, it's like somewhere over here. So it's kind of in the middle to lower half of that leg, right? It's like that. So, you know, God, look at how much we've been talking about, right? I'm, I've been trying to combine the, the, the measuring of things and how that all works compared to, the, um, compared to the force of it, right? So you can see I'm like this, okay? All right. Um, so let's see, I can get the, uh, you know, I can get the head in there. I can see the head's coming out of the shoulder, right? So I'm trusting my eyes here, right? I'm like, whoa, the head's coming out of the shoulder. His brow is like right here, right? It's like right there underneath like that top of the deltoid, right? It's like sitting here. And I can look at the shape of this, you know, it's like, look at the shape of the top of his head. I'm looking at this shape right here, by the way, All right? Something like this. All right, and this is going like this. Okay, so something like that. See, it, gives, it helps him get the size, the proportion of it, you know, just to kind of like lock it down there. You see, his other arm is sweeping down here in the back. All right, now, admittedly, I've really taken my time today to step you guys through, you know, everything that um, goes on in my head. I don't think this drawing is super forceful because of just how much time I put into all this other stuff. But this is everything that that goes on. You know, I'm just trying to get this stuff to you know be nailed down right. Let's try it again. Uh, let's do the same pose. All right. Except this time, I'm just going to try and draw. Um, see what happens. Right. Let's see. F F. Uh, F F. Brush. There we go. So, you know, normally I'd be doing this and I would be soft touching and I would want to feel this stuff out, right? I want to get like all this energy into the shoulder. If I find I want to go darker, I shrink the brush, right? That that allows me to get that darkness in there, right? See? 
And I go bigger, bigger is for me to feel things out, right? I want to feel it out, right? So it's like this. I didn't get that leg going. I'm just going to get a gesture out of this, okay? I'm still seeing the angles, locations, right? I'm looking at all this other stuff, but now I'm like, all right, let me just kind of hammer this out, be you know, more loose about it, more gestural about it. I'm being very vague about it, you know? Do I always draw like this? No, but this is definitely how I teach students at the beginning of force drawing, right? I, I want them to start with vagueness. Uh, why, right? Why? Why start with vagueness? Well, uh, because it gives you freedom, you know, it just kind of gives you freedom to move around. And I want students to feel like they can own the page, you know? So that soft touch approach allows you to, uh, allows you to do so, you see? So now I can think more about like the energy of things, right? Like how's this all connecting, right? And here's like a gesture drawing, like, I don't know, this is probably about a minute long gesture drawing, something like that, right? Here's his hair and I could start I want to start getting more accurate here. I, I feel like, uh, let me let me chop this angle in here a little more correctly, all right? And I could start pulling that kind of stuff, you know, start pulling that kind of stuff out of here, get more volume into it if I wanted to, right? So hopefully that makes sense. You know, like I said, I'm doing this one quicker, but you can see how everything that I just walked you through evolves to um, evolves to this idea, right? This is how it actually happens i showed you a bunch of stuff that's going on in the um you know in the background right in the background like i said this brush doesn't allow me detail let's get a different brush here i really like this animation note well let's do jet let's do soft touch the animator notes brush is great to really get detail because it's super opaque and you can really like dive in there right i keep looking at this foot i can't help but like fall in love with <laughs> what's going on here i like this foot over here is just amazing right so I want to feel like the, um, the roundness of this foot, right? And I could see the um, the pull down into that ankle, right? And then all that skin is going to sort of reverse its direction this way. Yeah, this soft touch brush, I have to say, is pretty darn awesome because, you know, you could be very um, big about it and... Uh, uh, generic right you could be generic about it like i was with the classic there um and yet it could be really specific you know like here i could really build out the shape a little bit more i'm thinking about the form i want to overlap that a little bit more you know get the shape here across the toes all right something more like this all right and then you know and then i i usually get that whole shape and then i start like blocking out toes right so i can block these guys out you see I'm being a little generic right now. If I were to get in there, like really get in there, I would look at the shape of every toe, you know, like look at the detail of all this pressure and all this beautiful weight and pressure that's pushing down on that ankle. And I, again, look at the foot, you know, the, the calf, the lower leg is being driven underneath the weight of the body and then the foot's coming out. And like I said, I, I, I man, I live for those moments, right? It's like all the force of it, we're coming off the knee, we're coming off the back of the shin here, and all that pressure is getting pushed, you know, back, right? It's going back in space like this, right? Like so. So, and I could sit and just do studies of this, like spend an hour just sitting here and like studying, you know, study the foot, right? Just so beautiful, right? Look at the wrinkles again, look at the creases, you know, see that shape. You know, how this is all like driving down like this. You know, I keep playing with pressure as to how dark or light I want the line relative to um, to its size, right? So that's something you have, you know, that's a skill. That's just something you have to get used to, quite honestly. You know? Remember the top of the foot's always slightly pushed out or straight. You never, you never want to go concave here. Look what that does. Look what that does. Look what that did to that foot, right? If I, uh, if I go concave, it like annihilates the the pressure of the top of the foot and how it works its way down. I see this a lot, by the way, and that is totally incorrect. Uh, your foot's not designed like that. So, you know, it might look cool, but functionally it definitely doesn't work. You know, like we want to push out like this because this outward push is what drives into the lower foot here, right? Look at the ball of um, Trinda's foot here. You know, you can see the bone pushing out, right? And then you can see the shape of everything right here. You see? So, 
you know, just awesome, right? I mean, if I were to get in there, I'd be like, oh, what's the shape of the toe? Look at the shape of the, the, the baby toe here, right? The pinky toe there, you see that? You can see like the toenail and it's got like this very interesting little forceful shape about it, right? You know, you can see all the, look at all the pressure pushing out on the side here. I know I'm getting into minutia here, but I want you to see that force, you know, we always talk about the big picture stuff, but there's a lot of little things to look at. You know, you can see the tendons, you know, pulling down through the foot and then, you know, the structure each toe and right, I'm going into this like long uh, tangent here, but yeah, just so exciting, right? So we go from this big stuff to all the way down to these little ideas as to what is, uh, you know, as to what's happening, right? Okay, now, um, before I leave and I hand it over to Matunje, I was here in spirit <laughs> and by name, um, I wanted to take a look at this uh, I was looking through, uh, you know, references and I thought, you know, we never do really something like this. I kind of dread doing something like this because uh, it's super challenging. Um, but let's just take a quick shot at it. Uh, I will be, just because of the chopping and the measuring thing, I think it would be really interesting to discuss this. So when there's something that has, you know, a model has this much foreshortening, it could be anything. In this case, we have Trinda lying down. Uh, you know, there's two things going on. There's like the, the truth about perspective. It's like understanding, whoops, understanding that, you know, the trend is in this perspective, right? Like really getting that space, understanding that space, right? That's the 3D version of things. The 2D version of things is I want to understand this angle. It's like, I want to understand where this moment is vertically, this moment is vertically, the knee is, the foot where the toe lands compared to this one, where this is, where this is, you know, where the hand is, where the rib cage sticks out, where the jaw is. You see, these are all like flat moments. And then I, I can measure across. So you kind of go into that like, you know, grid mode, right? Sort of old fashioned grid mode, still used today, right? Uh, you know, to even transfer uh, an image from one place to another, like doing a giant mural or something like that, right? You'll like box it out. So there's this mixture of 2D to 3D. And on top of all that, we wanna to try to get force out of it as well, right? So just a lot of different things to consider, you know, and trying to get all those forces to actually, you know, work. I think this is a reverse S by the way. I'm gonna try that. So, <laughs> excuse me. Um, you know, it's like, here's, I'm starting at the rib cage. I'm like looking at this line right here, like the upward thrust of the rib cage, right? Is like this. Now I'm going to bring that down and around and kind of imagine the thickness of his body here. So when I want that, I start looking at the shape, right? I'm looking at that shape right there. And I'm like, well, this is thrusting up. And then it, it kind of really falls down his stomach. And I want to almost like lay myself down into his, into his pelvis like this, you see? Right now, I don't know if my measurements and everything are right yet, because this is a very challenging pose, right? So I'd really start paying attention to like, okay, if I said the apex is here and I came straight down from that apex, right? Let's say it's like right here. Where does that take me, right? Oh my goodness, right? Like that takes me already into the thigh. So I'm already off. You see that? It's like I have to cut this over his shorts, right? Over, look at the edge of his shorts. Man, it's like over here. Right. My brain doesn't want to accept that. I'm like, wow, the foreshortening is way stronger than I anticipated. You see that? All right. So that and that starts making sense because now I look and I'm like, wow, his rib cage really does come far over. Like here's the full plane of his abs, right? And you can see the roundness in here starts to help me make sense of just how much foreshortening there really is, right? Just how far back he's going. So there's a lot of stuff to consider here, you know. It's like thinking about the force of it, paying attention to the structure of it. Sometimes the structure will help you um, understand the foreshortening of it, right? Because, you know, structure and shape go hand in hand, right? The challenge there is to recognize that these two things go together, right? So even just with the little bit I drew, right, you could see how sort of mind bending this was, right? It's like understanding where this is. Maybe seeing where the other apex of the rib cage is, you know, where's that measurement compared to this one? Where does it come down? You know, where does this actually happen? You know, what's this like negative space in here? That's looking pretty good, right? You can see that form is starting to happen. The, the depth feels pretty good. Getting that thickness, right, to his body. 
you know, getting that shoulder. I really like this shoulder in here that's like sitting in there like a box, right? And how his arm's going to come out of that, right? So I get that. I can look at the negative shape a little bit. I can look at the angle. It's very shallow. It's not coming out at us. Well, it is coming out as fast here, and then it kind of starts to straighten out, right? I didn't even get into anatomy, but like his, his deltoid muscle here would help going around the arm, right? There's just so much stuff to talk about. You know, what's the horizontalness of the legs? As I draw one leg, right, notice when I get to like the kneecap down here and I look up, I'm like, whoa, I'm just barely at the shorts on the other leg, right? It doesn't make sense to my head, <laughs> right? But that's the truth of the matter. Why? Because we have this strong precedent, right? This strong angular perspective precedent that's been set up, right, um, earlier all the way up at the rib cage. So you look at his one leg, like the, the high leg, and it's like, what is his knee doing like all the way out here, right? Well, you know, that's because of this perspective angle, right? So it's like this knee compared to this knee and where is it and so on and so on and so on, you see? So I'm not going to go through this whole one because I wanna, I'm want i going to give Matunje the chance to draw, but hopefully I've given you enough here to recognize, wow, okay, and for shortening, I really have to pay extra attention. You know, look at the shorts top here. You know, and where is that? I mean, that that's digging in all the way up into like the rib cage. I, I think I'm even a little far back, even with where I am. It's like over here compared to where I have to come up, you see? So I'm constantly looking up and down and left and right, up and down and left and right, positive and negative space and, and so on, okay? All right, um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, when you see this recording, I will not be here for this. I'll be traveling. So Mertunje and Swenley will be answering questions for you based on what I'm drawing and what Mertunje will be drawing next. Um, and then I will see you the following week live, okay? All right, Mertunje, um, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> how are you, Mike? All right, good, I'm doing well. So uh, let's, yeah. So let's get you, uh, let me, let me give you the ability to share. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Participants. Co-host. Okay, so it's all yours whenever you're ready. Yeah. Hmm. I think we are up. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm uh, my my camera is kind of flickering today, so. Oh my God, what is this happening? Wait a second. Okay, hopefully this is working. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah. My, my chat is kind of flickering today. I don't know what's the reason. <laughs> Maybe they didn't want me, want you to see me today. I'm just sitting behind. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's get some some poses doing. So I was I was listening to the whole conversation. You know, like what Mike was uh, basically discussing with you guys and. Uh, I think the conversation like really revolves like this week the conversation really revolves around uh, like the function you know how how much of a function you're seeing versus how much of let's say all the technicalities you're looking at you know in the figure let's say proportions and measurements and such um and yes they are important you know the only thing is um you should be like you should be learning how to prioritize it, prioritize it, you know? So let's say you're not, uh, you you start to learn and you just don't jump in learning proportions in the first because they are a very easy trap to to get you away from this, oh, you know, this is basically this word here, right? It's this, okay? So, uh, and that is important, you know? That is important because we are not like drawing wooden mannequins, okay? You're not drawing flowers either, right? <laughs> We are drawing the human body, right? That's a combination of the beauty and the technicality, right? And uh, so we'll start discussing, I mean, you know, we are a big fan of this, right? So we're going to start from this. And by time, uh, as you learn more and more, the proportions or the lines that you're drawing will just kind of tighten up more and more. And we'll give you both the things at the same time, okay? So it's going to give you the beauty, but also, let's say, the technicalities, okay? So your proportions would be good. Uh, it will be more believable. It will be correct, right? But with all the exciting things that um, you see in a human body. Right? We start with this one. Um, again, you see how important the function is. He, he's putting his, uh, you, you know, you know. sometimes when you see like this, when you see any pose, uh, this happens like very quickly, but you want to intentionally go in and spend more time with it. So for example, <laughs> 
you know, you see like how he's like putting all his weight in here, okay? And that is why uh, the templates that we teach, you know, one of the templates then that can really fit in here and that, um, yeah, I mean, that will surely represent the function of it is a front-to-front -front leg, okay? So you see, like when I'm doing a front-to-front -front leg, like, oh yes, it looks like this can hold the whole posture, right? Like the whole weight, this whole weight sitting on these two legs, okay? And you see this leg, this leg is very slanted and he's barely on his toes, right? So what does this tell us, right? The function of it. Now, if you make it wrong, like if you don't focus on the function, well, obviously it's not going to show the believability in here, right? So, um, and uh, we can do one experiment. When I make this whole figure, we can change the templates of the leg or template of anything else, let's say the torso or the arms, and you see like how, how, the, how the function is broken, okay? It does, it does look broken, right? So let's go with this one. Um, I think, like, look here, if you look here, like, he's actually pushing out his chest, and uh, the back kind of seems flat in here, so I think it's a reverse as, um, you know, reverse is a, is a rare kind of torso type, right? so, but anyway, you, you still find it, it's also a function. So I'm just going to start with this one, um, I have the same uh, syndrome, <laughs> drawing, drawing bigger syndrome, so, yeah, I'm just going to draw bigger. Uh, well, one of the benefits is like you guys can understand it better, right? You see like big things, you understand it better. Anyway, so I'm just going to go with the reverse S, okay? Like he's pushing out his chest. I think like the, the push is on the rear end as well. Okay. So we'll go for that one. Uh, now directly after, the, directly after the template, usually I go for shape. I actually see in shape, you know, I, I'm actually judging the figure in terms of shape. So instead of just looking at this, I'm looking at this, like, basically this relationship right here. Okay. So here's one shape, here's another shape. Okay. Uh, but obviously I, I'm actually going for the for the force first and then I can add the structure later. Okay, so I'm basically looking into this kind of, uh, looking with this kind of filter and then I'm just like uh, kind of applying that into this order. Okay. The gesture, uh, which is the force first and straights afterwards. So let's go for straights. Um, and, and many, many people ask, ask me like, hmm, is like, and, and I've also been looking at this form, like, how do you know, like, is this the right one? Well, it can be wrong, right? I mean, uh, but don't keep it to your mind. This is one of the things that I've been discussing a lot with the mentees in the, in the previous week, especially this month, you know, like this February month, <laughs> uh, this question is like really coming up is like, how do you know? Well, uh, I actually don't know, right? I mean, in many poses, I do know because of the experience that I have. But the thing is, in all the poses, and some, sometimes like poses are very, very difficult, by the way. And so it's like, don't keep it to your mind. Don't think like, oh, if I do this, this is not going to work because it's just a drawing, right? You experiment, uh, you experiment it and then find it out instead of just keeping it to your mind and say, oh, I don't think it's going to work, right? So don't do that. So I do it and find it out. That's going to become uh that's not going to become your failed experiment that's going to become your invested experiment <laughs> you know so anyway uh you'll find like one way that's not going to work if, even if it's wrong sometimes yeah sometimes even in uh let's say when we teach you know sometimes you say oh you um you do it intentionally wrong you know one thing that you can do is like doing it intentionally wrong to see why things don't work okay uh and we can do this uh same with this figure as well Anyway, he's, he's barely on his toes, just like I said. So he doesn't have a lot of pressure and big toe. And all of his other small toes are in the air. So I'm doing that. Here again, I'm not like worrying about, oh, it should come out realistically. Look at that, right? It's just a mess. If you if you look closely, right, that's just a mess. But if you, if you just kind of go far away, say this, uh, at least this size, it's going to show you the function, okay? And I can clean this up later. I can just like tighten this up later. So don't have to worry about that anymore. Anyway, uh, I'm putting some four lines in here and just to show the roundness, okay? Because um, right now you can see the legs are just forces. Uh, I, I know I, I can see them in this kind of, I, I'm looking in the legs or the whole figure in this kind of shape filter. But when I'm just doing gesture, you can still, let's say, make a cross contour line and make it feel like it's coming out or like going into space. Okay. It's more like that. All right. And then I can make like make some shapes and such. 
but uh, one thing that's still missing in here is, is like he's reaching out, right? He's reaching out to <laughs> to something. So we really want to get that. So it's and this is not as important. Like like the shaping is not important. I just like want to get the intention of the post first. Um, here's the divider, like in the middle, so the crotch basically. Okay. Um, let's go for the reaching the arms, reaching out. So he's really pushing out his body, right? You see like his shoulders in there, he's like really reaching out his body, like doing this. I'm just giving it a subtle uh what do you say, like a suggestion, right? Now. I'm just like giving it a suggestion. Now I kind of like push the pose a little bit. That's that's my old habit. <laughs> because it's always uh it's always good to show actually more than less. Okay. So if you're if your figure is like showing a little bit more story. Well, it's not nothing wrong with it, right? You're actually doing better. But if you want to make it accurate, well, what I can do is uh raise this leg a little bit and just like bring it a little bit forward. Okay. okay. So in this case now, okay, he looks a little bit better uh in terms of like let's say balanced. Okay. So let's see, he's doing something like this. I'm just gonna give it something like that, right? Like a feet. Yeah, he looks uh he looks a little bit more balanced, right? Okay. Uh, now, now I can go in here and say, okay, let me do the shape of the hands. There's a very little, little negative space in here. So maybe, maybe I respect that. Maybe I do that. Again, the accuracy is not the goal, at least for now. At least for now, it's not the goal. It's like kind of showing his head and everything. So there's like his bun in here, right there. Uh, yeah, like giving it some cross border lines and, you know, that's it. And they, this can be your thumbnail. This can be like your analysis. Okay? So we also suggest writing things out. So let's say when I was like, basically telling you about this is like, oh, that's a reverse S is like reaching out. And this is the leg that he's like holding the weight on and so on and so on. In the beginning, you want to write it down because, uh, yes, in the beginning, you don't have any experience to so just uh go through everything right in your drawing and basically these ideas these writing ideas are going to translate into your drawing eventually so yeah it's like a checklist it's like a to-do this is like check 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 and you're putting that inside the figure okay? now one thing i can do with this one is uh it's good you know the, the drawing is good it, it's accurate but mm, yeah it can be more dramatic okay? it is dramatic but it can be more dramatic so we we'll go for like this a uh, little bit like more space, you know. I just want to like feel more space within this one. So uh, you can see there's a little, little, um, yeah, this is a little different. This this feet is a little bit far away. This one is a little bit closer to us. You can see there's like in like the the line that I'm drawing is not straight. It's kind of offset. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely a hint of uh, of space. So I so I really want to do that by the way. So let's go for it, right? I'm just gonna go this one. I'll put a little bit like more cross country lines, like more than I needed, because uh because I, I really want to like play with the space in here. And these cross country lines are gonna yeah, help me do that. So let's do this. Uh cross country lines like that. Now here I uh like like what Mike was talking about, that that grid mode. I am into that grid mode right now. I am basically imagining this type of grid. Uh what what kind of grid that I that I can make? Yeah, I mean you, you can actually go for you can actually go for something like this. It's like, oh this is like really coming towards us. <laughs> More like that. So uh, this this grid can be used for a building, let's say. Okay, I, I can make a like a very tall building in this one. Uh so here what we are doing is like we're really pumping up the scale okay of the of the figure or we are actually going in a tiny boat okay so we are looking at this figure like a, like a giant uh let's say building or something right uh this thing is good you know actually because it's going to help you have that more sense of awe you know again it's just like sense of wow it's just like whoa look at whoa look at this right <laughs> there's a kind of excitement you know that you can have what am i getting anyway um what i can do is like i can yeah now look at this right it's very flattish looking it's like okay it's on the side but we can actually bring it forward okay and we can make this leg and i go like this so uh let's go for it again i need to shorten this up <laughs> just imagining how win wing it would, would be for you guys to just look at it me every time just kind of resizing it but <laughs> i can't help it 
So it's, it's more like this. It's coming out like that. See, now I'm just like pumping up that uh, scale again. More, more sense of space is what I'm trying to get here. Uh, I'm trying to get some shapes in here. Oh, I should have misplayed the feet. Anyway, no worries. I'm going to easily fix that. Um, and see how it goes. I mean, maybe maybe I'm, I'm doing it too much, like more than needed. But again, just like I said, um, you have to like get it out of your mind first. And then then know if it's uh, then know if this is like too much or too little or is it okay to push that much um uh, yeah let's go for just like front of front template on this one i'm just gonna do this and then put like a kneecap in here let's just do this right so i'm, I'm really like pushing it out yep i think it's more like this this is uh showing me the depth in here this is the this is the shape here i'm adding anatomy a little bit here's a kneecap there we go. Right. So, so the feet feed in this this direction right here. Uh, it's not looking as great of a shape. So let me fix that really quick. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna taper down actually. So that that's the shape I want. All right. Yeah. See, you have you have more sense of space in here. I think I think that works. Uh, maybe a little bit of this in here. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, so it looks like yes, we have some place phase difference in here. Now look, you have another element to just go like more deep into space, right? We still have the reaching hands that I haven't made yet. So we, we can actually go for that one. And it's going to be like super small, <laughs> right? So let's do something like this. Let's do something like this. And then look at the head. That's going to be small, very, very small. So here's the brow ridge actually. Here's the head. And here's the bun, <laughs> Windows bun in here. There we go. So right there. If you compare it to the your first one, we'll see how this one comes out. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, I can do this. Let's compare them. So right there. This one's more flat. Yes, it's more accurate. Uh, things like that, but here it's also accurate, but also I push the story in here. Okay. And I think that that one looks good. So this is something, uh, like where's the use, right? You can use this, let's say in any of your projects, let's say you're you're making a comic book, right? You want a very dramatic pose. Uh, you're taking this reference, but you want to push it out, right? That's also very helpful. You can do that in storyboards, right? And you can, you can uh, take the same pose, but you can create more dramatic angles in here. Okay. There's a lot of use on here. I just like counted two, but I, I'm pretty sure there's like a million other places where you can use, uh, use like, what are you going to say? Use more freedom, actually. <laughs> okay, so use more freedom. Right. You see like the grid in here? That, that's coming out like that. Right. All right, uh, let's go for a second pose. Hmm. So here I have another one. Actually, one of my favorite poses, by the way, from Trenda. Uh, really, really good. It's it's. I don't know, like what he's doing, but <laughs> he's kind of a sneaky, sneaky pose. The function here is a different, actually. Uh, some people get confused by it. It's like, oh, I see the see the back. It's kind of flat. I see the chest. It's kind of flat. What should I do? Well, if you look right here, there's a squash that you can see. Yeah, okay. but Trinda, Trin, uh, Trinda is very ripped, by the way. You know, so he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have like this hanging pad or something. Okay, that's gonna. Show you the show you like these big squashy like like parts right so he he's actually very ripped okay? but you see right there uh, the function right you basically see a skin crease in there okay? and that is a uh, that is our hint for a C torso okay? so I'm just gonna go for a C now um here's one more thing by the way um if you, if you go for a C let's say well, it doesn't have to be curvy. It doesn't have to be like a camel hump all the time, okay? <laughs> you can actually go for a little bit more subtle variation of any of the templates, okay, that we teach. So, you know, you don't need to go like this. You don't need to go like that. You can go a little bit more subtle, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a stretch, but it's a little bit stretch, okay? And there's a squash. I don't need to like make these like big meaty squashes, right? You can just make it subtle, do it like this, and there we go. So we're gonna use this torso. 
uh, use this function, which is stretch and squash, which is turning out to be a sweet torso. Okay. So let's go for it. I'm going to push it. I'm going to make it subtle. Okay. Uh, a little skin crease in there. And there we go. We have the pelvis, which is coming to that. Okay. I'm pu putting in more line weight in here. Um, because yes, the stretch is actually happening. Now, uh, again, you see, actually, less clothes are very good. You know, so, something like an underwear or some some like underclothes. You know, any of kind of underclothes which are basically skin tight are like really good for form. Okay, so there we go. You see, like how it's like wrapping around. That's what I gave in here. Now, uh, the legs. You know, I, uh, let's say let's go for the legs. It's it's really just a little bit one rhythm. You basically you actually come from here. Uh, let's go for let's go for this leg right here. So I can go something like this. I can go for a front to the back right here, and I can go in front to the front. You know, so it's basically this leg. We're actually going like that, okay. something like this. Uh, I think the legs are a little bit bigger, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit more smaller, so I can show a little bit more pressure. Imagine like uh, if I if I make the legs look uh. A little bit longer, it makes the figure feels like it's not taking as much pressure into the legs. But as he's like squashing down in this really uncomfortable pose, but really dynamic pose, like he's taking up more pressure onto his muscles. Okay, so there we go. Uh, this this leg is also going a little bit back, like there. Uh, and this is actually going like this. Right? Yeah, so this is coming out like this. Look at this leg; it's just one rhythm. Basically. It's gonna make the feet in here. Uh, suggestions, right? Suggestions is what you need to, to give while, and what you need to learn actually as well, by the way. You need to learn to give suggestions so that you can depict the accurate function, but but you'll be faster enough as well because when you're doing like quick poses, yeah, yeah you, you, can't, you don't have enough time to go and like do the details. Suggesting is a very good word here. Okay? Need to learn to suggest. Uh, all right, so. And here I'm suggesting the weight. Okay, here I'm suggesting the function. Here I'm suggesting, let's say, the angles and such. I, I can make a little bit, I can make a little break here for the knee. Okay, I can. Yeah, after, after you get the energy, then you can just like manipulate it in any sort of way, by the way. So, yeah, we'll go for this one. Okay, something like this. Now look again. Be aware of space, by the way. Okay, see, I actually intentionally took uh, some poses which are more space driven today. <laughs> So I'm doing this. Let's say this hand is going to the back. I really love this hand, by the way, as well. And one of the main reasons why I love this, uh, why I love this pose is because of the hands. So we'll go for this one. Let's say a quick hand in here. Again, I'm giving suggestions in here. See, more like that. Um, how beautiful that hand is, if you, if you look. And something like this. Oh, that hand too, that well, by the way. <laughs> this one's actually far better. I want to choose one that I, I would choose this hand that I'm going right now. So dynamic, so great. Yeah, again, it's like giving more and more suggestions rather than, uh, yeah, more and more suggestions rather than giving doing the details. That, that can be done better for sure. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like straightening up the, straightening up the back a little bit more and just making it. Just trying to make, trying to elevate the angle. I'm trying to elevate the angle a little bit so I can, uh, I can easily depict the head here, like make it bunny again. This brush is very, uh, very easy to get dark, with, which is also problematic to to some people. Yeah, you want to get, don't want to get like too dark too fast, uh, in, in the beginning at least. I'm trying like kind of. Trying to make like more clear, right? putting in some corner lines again. Yeah, there we go. Right, <clears throat> see how how push that is. And then we are force colors in here. Yeah. So the direction force in here, right? We have we have a lot of applied force in here too. Uh, or in the zero chest. There we go. So so applied force in here too as well. There we go. We have we have other places where we have a bike course, but this is the main one. 
Uh, I, I can go in here for sure. I, I can go back in here again. Just trying to make it more. Just like Swenly always did, by the way. You know, Swenly always do this, and it's part of his workflow. He always uh, do a second pass and a third pass, maybe even a fourth or fifth. It's up to requirement. But yeah, I mean, you can do this if you want like more, more details in here, more clarity in here. For some people, this is a mess, right? <laughs> Uh, but for me, it's not, and I can just like go in the same. Uh, I just like to keep my original sketch in there. But obviously, if I want to like present more clean stuff, just like Swan Lee is doing for his character design and stuff, I will definitely go and go ahead and have to like clean this up. Yeah. But when we are talking about like studies and things like that, this is like a study, right? I'm studying and I'm not copying it in any sort of way. So. Yeah, when you want to like do more more cleanup stuff, more professional work, obviously you gotta you gotta clean this up, things like that. So you can do this too if it feels some like a mess to you, but for for me it's not. So I'm just gonna like put some details over the same sketch on the same layer, by the way. Here, here, see I didn't make any legs right now, so I'm just gonna convert that into shapes really quick. It's gonna give me some some volumes and then it's it's also giving structure and shape at the same time, okay. and I can I can just directly put in some anatomy in here, uh, yeah, to make it like look let's say more of a game. There's an inside knee, force in here, and I can just like quickly follow the shape, and drop some anatomy. I think this uh, legs deserve and this feet deserves <laughs> some more space. I'm just gonna fill it there. Yeah, I, I can go in there and follow the feed or uh, follow the function of the feed as well. Okay, I can just say, oh, that that foot isn't normal. Okay, it's, it's right there. It's right there. Now this brush is a little bit hard to get the details with. By the way, you have to like make it really small. I have to like push it like really hard. By the way, so again, I, here I'm also suggesting. I'm not gonna go into like super detail right now. Just find like. Still suggesting right there. Uh, I can go in there and say, okay, this this feet needs a little bit more attention. Uh, that the toe is in front. So as you're closing up with the uh, feet, Martinja, we have to we need yeah. to come to the end of today's session. So thank you for the awesome, uh, forceful uh, conversation and forceful drawings. I really love the effect that you have with that on um, that gesture brush. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we covered a lot of subjects today, everyone, right? We, I started off with, I think, a little bit more of the, the nuance of the measuring, the detail, and that you're always looking for that. We just don't want that to be your focus, right? And that you're trying to do that measuring through the active force itself, you know? And I think that Mertenje did a good job here of then just seeing how all of that really, uh, you know, comes to life, you know? So thanks, Mertenje, for, um, you know, being able to make it today. Uh, you guys, uh, Swanley and Mertinje will be here, of course, as they were throughout this hour, helping you guys out. Next week, we will be live again. And uh, I will see you then. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, Mertinje, for coming. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in seven days. See you guys. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.